Uh-oh. Hey, everybody. Well, this isn't doing exactly what I wanted it to do. Can I fix it? I probably can't fix it. Hang on. Hang on, everybody. I know. We're off to a great start here. No? Okay, nothing for me to do. All right. That's fine. We're just going to roll with it. This is good. It's good enough, I think, probably. All right. So, hey, good morning. It is Monday. It is something or other, August 9th. Yeah, we're going to go with August 9th. And we are here once again in the living room with our kittens. I brought some toys to play with them. I thought I would try to do uh, 60 frames per second just to see if we could manage it and how good it would be. But for some reason, the software tells me it is sticking to 30. So that's fine. Fine with me. I hope everything looks all right for you guys. Uh, speaking of tech stuff, I'll just get this out of the way real quick. I made some changes to the regular Kitten Academy live stream. So if you, like me, have been a little bothered uh, by some of the inconsistent frame rates there, I, I may have, uh, knock on wood, fingers crossed, solved it, possibly. And if not, know that I'm still working on it. <clears throat> All right, enough about tech stuff, though. So uh, there's no real news to share with everybody that you haven't probably already heard. <laughs> Basically, what are you doing? Um, you'll notice that Loom has her suit off, and she's doing great with it. And uh, I think you already know that today is the day we're taking Harry back to the vet for his evaluation. In fact, we're leaving probably in about an hour. Uh, so I will let you all know how that went. After the fact, of course, I can't let you know how it went now, can I? If I could, I certainly would. Save myself a trip, too. All right. Paisley, you got to let it go. Oh, okay, we did let it go. Good. These guys have really learned to love toy time, and uh, as soon as I get the wand out, they are ready to play. Plus, uh, Basket Weave, oh, Basket Weave right here behind me. Hi, buddy. Basket Weave has learned to climb the fence, which he had already shown that he was figuring it out, uh, but now he climbs right up to the top of it as fast as he wants every time. He hasn't yet learned how to get off of the top of the fence <laughs> to go down the other side. But surely that's not, uh, that's not going to be long coming. So as soon as I pulled this out, he heard it. He came running right up to the top of the fence. And, uh, and then I put him down on the ground. And he ran right back up to the top of the fence like three times in a row. None of the others have figured out how to climb it yet. Of course, we've had classes where the entire class figures it out and the fence really doesn't do much of anything. Um, oh, okay, finally. Whew. Um, oh, wow, Leaf and Princess, look at that. She is a good jumper in Argyle, too. They are both really good jumpers. Argyle's the number one hunter. Usually Princess Paisley gets frustrated after all of her brothers start going after a toy, and she'll sort of back off and wait for them to get finished, and then she'll come in and start playing. Looks like she gets first go today, though. Oh, hi, kids. Yeah, Loom is super zoomy and just so sweet. She's so fun. When I just came in here before we started this close-up, just a couple minutes ago, as soon as I came through the gate, uh, she ran up to me meowing and just talking to me and super excited to see me and get my attention. And I know she still is. Oh, she's sitting over here watching the toy now. I know she's looking forward to some extra attention. Yeah, Jim Hendrickson, yes, uh, Argyle and Basket Weave, I think of Basket Weave especially, but a couple of the kids, uh, what Jim said if, is that uh, uh, Argyle likes to use the wheel occasionally, this, this cat wheel here that I've moved into their zone. And I have seen Argyle use it a little bit, but the one that really uses it, again, is Basket Weave. He seems like he's the sort of adventurous, athletic one. He's always the first one to climb something, uh, the first one to be interested in running on the wheel, which he has done extensively. And uh, he does it without any help from me, but if I do help him by getting, say, the laser pointer or something to motivate him, something for him to run after, then he really goes for it. Very smart kitty. Oh, hey, that's the next toy. You can't have that. That's supposed to be up here with me. I brought out two toys, uh, but uh, it seems like uh, Chevron there. Chevron wanted to give himself a preview by stealing the other toy. 
This one is fun. I haven't tried this toy uh, for them before. It's basically like a little piece of a fuzzy tail, like a, like a plushy toy tail kind of a thing. And they obviously like it quite a bit. The trouble is they can grab onto it too well. So once one of them has it, it's very difficult for me to get it back to keep playing. That's the trouble we're having right now. Those little worms that Logan likes are much easier to sort of pull uh, back from a kitty. And of course the feathers are too. That's a good question, Lindsay Rose. Which kitty loves Loom, uh, their mom, the most? I'm not sure. Um, it's, I know it's a question that's going to sort of come up when people talk about who they're going to adopt. If somebody adopts Loom with one of her kittens, which, by the way, would probably be the best choice since Loom is very playful and social but does not get along uh, easily, doesn't get along easily with other cats. Now, that's not to say she never could. I strongly believe that she could with some work um, because she's not super hyper-aggressive. She just uh, really is dominant. And uh, you'd need a special kind of cat and a, a lot of extra time, I think, to get them to be uh, all cool together. So I think getting Loom adopted with one of her kittens would be the best thing, if possible, um, to somebody that doesn't have other cats. And then she could always have a playmate since she'll always get along more or less with her kittens. So, uh, but your question was, which one gets along best with her? And I'm not honestly sure. They all get along very well with her, of course. So any of them would probably be a fine choice. You know, Alexandra Abercrombie, my daughter says it's Argyle. I think, Alexandra, that your daughter might be right. Because if I had to choose one that I see with her the most, I'd have to pick Argyle, if only because uh, she likes to go out to the cat run and she likes to sort of get herself up onto the very top shelf of the cat run and then just sit there like almost all day watching the birds and things outside in the cat run from the top shelf. And Argyle is almost always then going to join her. He goes right up there on the top shelf and snuggles up with her and they watch the birds together. Uh, and they do that very often. I'm sure they will even do it today. So that's a pretty good uh, choice, I think. Although they're all, like I said, they're all good choices. They all get along very well with their mom. Hi, Princess Paisley. I saw a request go by for a Princess Paisley t-shirt, uh, which is not a bad idea. There is, of course, the Catterns t-shirt um, that is on our store already. I think it's linked from our most recent blog post if you have trouble finding it. Everything's hard to find on that store, so I do suggest going that way. Go to our website, kitten.academy. Our most recent blog post has our most recent shirt designs on it. I'm wearing one of those still today. I need to change my clothes and shirt. Oh, I don't, I don't know if I can switch cameras while we do this, can I? Let me try. Yeah, there we go. This is the uh, Puget t-shirt. That's Puget uh, sort of visualized as his uh, new namesake. Namesake? Namesake, yes. <laughs> namesake. Uh, which is a great design. And then uh, I just ordered all the other designs too, and they can take quite a while to arrive, but I'm excited about that. I don't, I, you know, I don't know about other kitten pairings specifically. Again, they all get along really well, and I see each of them with the others fairly regularly. So I don't think there's any way to go wrong as far as the kitten pairings go. But it's a good question. It's something to keep an eye on, especially if you're one that's considering adopting to sort of pay attention to who likes whom the most. Oh, I see some people talking about the Teespring now. So I will tell you, uh, first off, that they have like a thousand different kinds of t-shirts and they describe them as like comfort tea and classic tea and um, uh, premium tea. And I've ordered all three in the past and uh, I don't know, they're, they're different. Like one of them is definitely like, like heavier than the others. And uh, I just, I couldn't tell you which is which. <laughs> I just couldn't. Uh, I think they need to do a better job of describing the differences. 
But that said, uh, they do all run pretty true to size for me anyway. I always wear either a medium or a large. Uh, lately large because I like stuff that's fitting a little loose. Um, and they've all been right on for me size-wise. And uh, the best part, of course, is that their customer support tends to be very good. So if you do have something go wrong and you got to complain to them, uh, they've been pretty responsive for me and for people that I've talked to. And, uh, and again, yeah, if you guys are talking about where to get the, I saw where to get one, the easiest way, the, the Teespring store, very difficult to navigate. If you go to our website, kitten.academy, and just read the most recent news post, uh, I go into uh, all of the new designs, and each of the pictures of the new designs in that news post on our website is a link to the design, uh, so you can get it that way. Uh, it's kitten.academy, yeah. Uh, Cluster, yeah, no, I mean, it hasn't really been asked. How's Herringbone's leg? He seems fine. He's been acting like he's just fine, but we're taking him to the vet in about an hour to find out what the vet thinks. So I will be sure to let all of you know. Uh, at the worst, I'll let you know in tomorrow's close-up, but I would anticipate it's good news. If you don't hear anything from me and you don't see him running around in a splint tonight, uh, then you know it was all great news. No news is good news, I think. All right, we're going to take this toy off of the wand and try the next. Hi, Chevy. Chevy's like, I'm not done with it yet. I'm going to try the next toy. I'm just trying to get this done with one hand and with Chevy on my leg. I can't do it with one hand. I think I'm going to need both. Hang on a sec here, folks. I didn't come with a tripod. I didn't plan this as well as I ought to have. Let's see, can I put this someplace where we can still see something while I'm doing it? Not really. Wow, that is a terrible view. Okay, let me be quick. Hang on. That toy's got to go in my pocket so they don't keep trying to attack it. I'll put the feather on real fast. There we go. All right, kids, we're switching to the feather. You ready for this? Uh, there we go. Okay. Oh, now mom's into it. She doesn't. She didn't care for that last toy, but the feather. Loom is ready for that. Loom is. Uh, she loves to play, but she's always sort of deferential towards her kittens. So once they start to get involved, she usually just sits down and waits. It's kind of sad in a way because I would like to see her get a chance to really zoom after something. But I think to do that, I'm going to have to arrange a time when I can put her kittens away and just have her out. She is a big kitten, though. She loves to play. So um, let me take a minute and talk to you about Mural. Mural, the new mom cat, uh, is uh, she's out and around the house somewhere, but she's not exactly the type to come sit at the gate and wait for me. So I don't know where she is. We'll go find her in a few minutes or try to find her. But uh, the real thing I wanted to just mention about her is she's getting real big. She's eating well. She's doing great. Uh, I think she's, she's just uh, going to be an awesome mom uh, with some very healthy babies. Um, and we don't know exactly when they're coming. But the reason that she hasn't been on the stream very much is not now that she's hiding in her room, which she doesn't really do anymore. It's more that she's not in her room at all. Uh, she just meows at the door to come out of her room every chance that she gets. And she just wants to be out and hanging out with us and, and around the house. Mostly hanging out with us, though. She'll meow and complain the whole time until DJ and I are settled down somewhere that she can come settle down with us, like in the bedroom. She'll come and sit on the bed or next to the bed or under the bed sometimes, depending. Uh, and she just wants to hang out. And that's the only thing that sort of makes her, makes her calm down a bit is when she can just hang out. So she's been doing a lot of that. She gets to hang out almost all the time. She gets along so well with the faculty. She just doesn't start any trouble with anybody. And when pe trouble is started, she's always sort of de-escalating the situation. She's never raising the stakes. So 
because of that, she gets to hang out with the faculty and us pretty much as much as she wants, which means it's hard to get her on the stream. But we do have to keep her in the practice of going to her room so that once she is ready to have her kitten, she has a place that is appropriate for that. Uh, I know, uh, despite what she probably wants, we're not going to let her have her babies in the master bedroom or, I don't know, in the sunroom or any other place. It's, it's got to happen in the annex. So, uh, so we do still put her in the annex once in a while, like uh, she was there overnight last night, but the night before, she spent with us in the master bedroom. So we're kind of playing it by ear until it seems like she's getting real close to delivery. Yeah, I see what, I don't know what Pat was referring to, but I know, I, I feel pretty confident that if we just let um, Mural have her babies where, whenever and wherever she wanted, my guess would be she would do it under the master bedroom bed, under the bed, which is the worst, the worst place uh, to let a mom cat have babies because it's such an inaccessible location. It's so hard to get under there. Uh, to either see what's happening or help with what's happening or to clean up the messes or anything at all, it would just be terrible. So that's definitely not okay. This is supposed to be a kitten close-up. Maybe we could see some kittens close-up for a few minutes before we start going to look for Mural. Now that we've had all this fun with these toys. Hang on, you guys. Hang on. Let me put this thing away. And this feather that you pulled out, too. Let's get rid of that before someone decides it would be fun to eat. Basket, what are you just doing over here staring at the fence by yourself with nobody else around? What even is that? i got to put the toy back in the toy drawer. Look at all these toys in the toy drawer. There we go. Just like that. Oh, that string is still sticking out a little bit. We can't have that. Somebody's going to see that and try to pull it. Uh, I can't oh, get in, in there all the way in. It really wants to stick out. Oh, look, basket weave is giving an example of what I was talking about earlier. I can't get that string in. He keeps climbing all the way to the top, but he hasn't yet figured out what to do next. I'm sure if I just give him a couple of chances, he's going to figure it out. He'll get over the top and jump down and do his own thing. Uh, it doesn't take much for him to figure it out. Buddy, I don't need you to be the fence leaper, though. Come on, buddy. Oh, yes, yeah, squeak to you, too, pal. Big squeak to you. Nobody else has even started to climb it, as far as I've seen, really. All right, let's have some close-up kitties. Look at that Argyle face. He's doing his eyes, too. Argyle, could your eyes be any wider? Look at him all the time. He's always got the Ari eyes, Ari guile. Oh, hi. He came over to say hello. And there's uh, Chevron, Chevy. And now he's going the wrong way. So is Harry going the wrong way? Somebody else is over here, though, behind me. Oh, okay. It's, hi, it's Basket Weave. Hi, buddy. Okay, time to go. Argyle. So here's our little herringbone, the one that's going to the vet today to get his updated x-ray and to check on his leg. And uh, he has been great. You can still see, like, if you, if you were just noticing for the first time, you'll notice that he does walk with a little tiny bit of a limp still. But it's tiny. He definitely is putting a lot of weight on his leg. So it's a huge improvement over where he has been. And I, for one, feel like he's probably doing great. Of course, how I feel about it is not really the determining factor, is it? Here's our Princess Paisley. Here's Harry again. Oh, Harry's like, don't touch me. What is that in your hand? 
Stop touching me with I've got one of the leaves in my hand. Oh yeah, hi. Argyle's been up here on my knee this whole time since I moved over here. I'm surprised you're not doing anything about that, Argyle. Here's basket weave, little basky. Hi, basky. What's this? What do I got here? I got it. You're gonna fall off. Okay, there you go, pal. Oh, hey. Oh man, I was looking everywhere for the chicken yesterday. I left it out somewhere. I looked I looked all over this room trying to find the can the tin of chicken. I looked everywhere. I looked through the whole house. I couldn't find it. This is the second can of chicken that has gone missing. Now, it's been out all night. Uh, I'm not going to feed it to them, but there's another one in the fridge ready to go. In fact, that would be a fun thing to do real quick. Can we do that? Let's see. Wow, they must have stashed that chicken somewhere. It's shredded chicken. They must have stashed it somewhere, and then he was just playing with it, probably trying to see if he could get it open. I'm just going to throw the whole thing out. It's been out there all night, and it's probably fine. But why? You know, why give them chicken that's been out all night? I don't know how I lost it, because I did look everywhere for it, including all through this room, even under the stuff. They must have hidden it pretty well. Hidden chicken, kids. All right, let's feed them a little bit of chicken, and then we will go look for our new mom cat, Mural, who's somewhere. Oh, they all know what this is, too. <laughs> Big tag on it like the mailbag knife. Yeah, well, let me tell you something that should be scary now that we just found chicken in this room. Uh, the scary thing is that that's the second container of chicken that has been lost, like I mentioned, and the first container of chicken that was lost has never been found. Uh, I still, to this day, don't know what happened to it or where it is. Uh, so that's potentially an issue. Oh, do you hear that growling? Oh, they're very happy about the chicken. That's, uh, that's the growling that means don't touch my treats. They're too valuable for you. I think this chicken I put in the fridge yesterday to defrost because I make, I make a whole bunch of the shredded chicken at once and then I put it in containers and I usually freeze some of it for later. So I took this out of the freezer and put it into the fridge to defrost and it's not entirely defrosted yet. I think the middle of that is a big chunk of chicken popsicle. Negative, I am a meat popsicle. Argyle's the biggest talker. He's the oh, oh, he just hit me. Did you see that? He, he was hitting me, and he hit me and moved away so that I wouldn't take the chicken that he's eating. So silly. Here, Argyle, you want some more chicken? I want to hear you growl about it, though. Will you do that for me? He's gonna, did you see that paw go out to stop me? Don't take my chicken. So silly. All right, hi you guys. Do you want some more? You gotta let me give it to you. You can't just take it yourself from the from the bowl. No, you can't do that. You gotta let me give it to you. Here. It's going some kind of. Oh, okay. Okay, there you go.
Hey, I, what did I just say about not taking it yourself from the bowl, Argyle? What did I just say? I think some of these are little pieces of chicken ice. That should be fun. That one's a very icy. You'll have fun with that, buddy. Yeah, it is just shredded chicken. I just buy uh, usually whatever chicken is cheap at the grocery store. Uh, chicken thighs are great, though, because they're very fatty. Um, and chicken breast is okay, and other stuff is, you know, it's all right. Um, anyway, you just get it, and if you got like an instant pot or a pressure cooker, uh, you just take the chicken right from the store, throw it in the pressure cooker, add, uh, you know, a big pinch of salt, depending on how much chicken you got. Add uh, some water, just enough to, to sort of cover part of the chicken so it doesn't go all dry while you're pressure cooking it. And then you pressure cook it for, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes, something like that. And uh, then the real trick, the, the best part, is when you shred it, there's plenty of ways to shred chicken, but uh, we've got a KitchenAid mixer. And if you just take the chicken and throw it into the KitchenAid mixer and mix it, uh, th that thing shreds the chicken perfectly. I mean, just perfect. It's such a quick hack if you, if you have one. I don't think a hand blender would do the trick. Uh, but that KitchenAid, every time, that's exactly how I do it. Okay, this is all ice now. We're done. We're done because you guys have just eaten chicken sickles. I gotta go let this thaw out some more, okay? I know you still like it. It's probably fun that way. It's a fun texture, temperature. All right, but we're gonna be done for now. I know. They're all on me, along with extra little bits of chicken. When I stand up, you guys can try to find all the bits that you missed, okay? You gotta let me stand up, though. Oh, okay, there we go. Whew. All right, let's go find our new mom before we're done. Oh, she's talking to us. She's over there. She's over there. Do you see her? That's her making those little mew noises. Look out, Maggie. We'll give you some. Yeah, Maggie always wants a little bit of whatever's going on, but she's very polite about waiting her turn. Uh oh, now the kittens are going to come over here to get some, and I know one kitten that's going to figure out how to get over here and get some. Don't I? <laughs> Look at this audience we've attracted. Maggie, you want a chicken sickle? That's totally a frozen piece of chicken ice. Okay, Maggie, there you go. One big piece for you. And uh, where is she? I heard her meowing. I still hear you, but it's, it's like you're a ventriloquist. Where is it? There you are. You're over here. Hi. Come here, sweetheart. You want some chickens? I think you do want it. Are you going to take it from my hand, though? That's the question. So um, she eats, I think, probably the right amount, but I've been trying to get her to eat even more than the right amount. So... Uh, last night, I bribed her to stay in her room for the night by giving her a big bowl of dry food, the RC mom and baby cat food, mixed with Dr. Elsie's clean protein dry food, um, and she loved it. It's the dry food. was It's like a bowl of treats, like a giant bowl of treats as far as she's concerned. It was the best thing ever. In fact, she ate the entire bowl of dry food so that was a big hit and we'll probably repeat that again tonight and leave her overnight with a bowl of dry food in her room hi maggie you're being very sweet you want to clean that chicken off my fingers there's still a little bit there let me clean up a bit thank you thank you maggie So, uh, so like I said, Mural has been doing fantastically. She's just, she gets along good with everybody. She's a sweetheart. And uh, her biggest complaint is that she's not around us 24-7 the way that she would like to be. Other than that, uh, she just does everything fine. Look, I'm getting chicken all over her. Yeah, she knows it too. Okay. I know. I got to wash my fingers, don't I? Maggie only helped so much. 
Come on over here, away from the trash can and stuff. Yeah, there we go. Let's say hi to you over here. You talking to Maggie now? What is that? I just finished saying how nice you are to everybody, so don't start conflict. Here's Custard, by the way. Big Custard. Custard checking out the chicken. I need to put that away before I lose yet another tub of chicken. Put it in the fridge right now. That's not a real hand wash, but it is a hand rinse, so that's something. Yeah, oh, I know, I know. She's still got a little bit of a sneeze. But it's still not very bad. You notice that she's got like the classic tabby swirl going on her sides. I think you can see it on both sides. I know, I got a little bit of wet chicken on you. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, so Debbie says, have you felt for babies yet? Yeah, I have felt her a little bit here and there, and I can definitely feel something going on, although it's hard for me to tell exactly what. Uh, and you can see, look how, you see the curve of her belly. I know it's kind of hidden from most angles, it's hard to tell, but she is big. Like, if you can feel her belly, she, her belly is very, very big right now. And if I do this, oh, you might be able to see. Do you see all that? And she's like, stop that. I know. But she's definitely a very, very big belly, and the rest of her is very skinny still. And I think every day she's showing more and more and more. So uh, it's, it's really hard to guess how long it's going to be until she has her babies. I can tell you uh, that uh, we got her a week ago last Saturday. So she's been here for a week and two days. And when we picked her up on Saturday, the doctor had just done an ultrasound and an x-ray. And what we learned from that is that she had at least two weeks left before she could deliver. So uh, if I'm doing the math right, that means probably the earliest she could possibly deliver would be this coming weekend. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was another week after that, if she delivered the weekend after this. Um, or, you know, there's a big range. She could deliver anywhere in between there or even after that. So it's really hard to guess right now, but I think as we start to get closer, we'll start to get more clues that we can use to decide uh, when exactly she might deliver. And uh, if it seems like it's taken a while, and I'll talk to the doctor about this today while I'm seeing her, we'll think about bringing her back in for another x-ray too so that we can get an update on the progress and... Uh, also figure out, you know, if we're past that two-week mark and maybe get a count of how many kittens there actually are because it's very difficult to count the number of kittens with an ultrasound. Uh, very, very difficult. And we, they didn't, she didn't even try, actually. She just, she counted, you know, up to three and then was like, oh, that's at least three. That's, that's what we know. It's like, it's like counting how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. Like, you know, you do count the, a minimum number, but, but there's not the upper bound that you're placing on that, you know? It's one, two, three, and then you're like, yeah, that's good enough. Isn't that right, Custer Doodle? What do you think? What do you think of what's going on out here? <laughs> well, everybody, I think that's it. I think I got you all the right kind of news. And we'll do another close-up uh, tomorrow, probably. And no guarantees, but uh, that would be the plan. Uh, right. I can't think of anything else. If I'm forgetting anything else, I'll just have to get you next time. So uh, thanks so much for joining us. I really do appreciate it. I know I say it, uh, you know, but, but I, I really mean it every time and I feel it. Uh, it's, 
Not just wonderful to have all of you here to uh, listen to me ramble and to chat with me on the chat, but that is nice. I do like it. And it's wonderful, though, to have you here to uh, sort of support the Kitten Academy um, in finding adopters for the kittens that come here. Uh, just, just being here and watching it helps us get more reach on YouTube, which helps us find more potential adopters for the cats and kittens, which is what we're all about. So just by watching, you have helped us do what we do, and I, I greatly appreciate all of you for that. Thank you so much, and I will see you uh, next time. Look at the camera. There you go. Oh, look at that pretty face. Yes, very pretty face. Well, don't worry about that, Muriel. You just focus on making good kittens, all right? Yeah, we'll take care of everything else. Oh. She got surprised by custard right around that corner, I think. It's cute, though, that she just sits down and makes a noise about it. That's what I'm talking about with the de-escalation. She's going for the cat tree. All right. See you guys on the regular Kitten Academy live stream.